Hello and welcome to the Greg Fearon podcast with your host Greg Fearon and today I have the awesome Katie Ford on the show and she's going to tell us everything she does because she's a bit of a magician with your mind and your body. Hey Katie, how are you? I'm good, thank you Greg for having me, thank you for inviting me on. Uh, so yeah, I work um, I work through the mind, body and the soul so the transformation for me comes from all three through my own experience and then working with thousand ladies so I transform through each element mind, body and soul transformation coach Awesome yeah. so obviously I met you what just maybe not even a year ago maybe Yeah I think we are just saying weren't we probably I think it was back beginning of the year Yeah and you always struck me as quite a deep soul so just give people a little bit of your background and your backstory as to how you got to where you are now I would go oh, wow how long you got <laughs> but, <laughs> the condensed version right <laughs> I'll give you that I'll give you the really short version um come from kind of like an athletic athletic background um and I went on to decide that so my dad was a coach being very inspired by um kind of that athletic forum went on to do my um degree and yeah, started, started personal training. Um, fascinated by people um, and their habits and behaviours and, and what have you. Obviously went down the personal training route, but was just fascinated by the mind. Um, so I went on my own journey as well. Um, was often in search um, of kind of um, happiness and all that part um, as we often are, but I was like, I'm going to go even deeper with this shizzle. And there's one thing that my dad left me um with when he passed away and is no okay. longer in this realm i was only 17 at the time so that was very challenging um at the time because i lost not only my dad i lost um my coach my kind of supporter and my whole life was kind of in athletics at that time so i my dad was very much a bit of a philosopher a bit of a um, looking back now, I think we'd have had interesting conversations. Um, but yeah, so that was in my genes in that sense. And I, he left me with this one message, like whatever you, whatever you want to be when you grow up, make sure you're happy. And I just used to laugh when I was little. Um, but then this kind of left a very profound um, mission of mine, like to look actually what is true happiness. And um, so I kind of like went on a bit of a mission myself to find that and um, tripped up a few times, made mistakes, also had many glorious moments and successes off the back of um, back of that. Um, and then kind of come um, into a place where I was like, this is my purpose. Like my purpose is, is helping people on this journey. Um, and for me, happiness. Um, yeah, I tried it with the body, went on to bikini competing. So had a body that even I look and go, wow, how did I do that? But with a lot of discipline that comes from the athletic background and, and what have you then, um, mindset wise as well. Like, obviously, we know that happiness comes from the mind. But for me, it comes from um, understanding what your soul really like connection, that higher consciousness, that higher being connected to something bigger than you. Um, so within my journey, it kind of went body, it went mindset. And then for me now, um, it's soul as well. So I've used that within my work of how I connect those three elements together meet the the lady where she's at but for me that's what gets you the happiness and often in the search of happiness we won't find it we've just got to be um so so yeah so that's kind of like part of the journey in a in a little roundup <laughs> to where I got to now wow I don't even know where to start All right so let's unpick this for the ladies that will be listening back to this so just talk me through what athletics and that discipline kind of taught you what was the big lesson? Well, um, the discipline. I mean, for me, um, with discipline, um, there comes um, the element of of success. Like with with for me personally, but discipline has. I think our coach often um, explain this is a pendulum discipline as a pendulum. When it goes too far one way, it mm -hmm. can be very punishing. Um, so for me, I was very hard on myself. I was very, very hard, harder on myself than I've ever been on any clients or anything like that. Um, because it was like, if I said, I'm going to do it, I'm doing it. And that created a lot of great things in my life, but it also created a lot of pain because if I said I was going to do it, then I'm doing it. So that discipline, I was like, 
imprison, imprisoned by. And I've worked a lot on myself with that to be able to come to a balanced place with discipline, uh, which I'd like to say that I'm, I'm finding that balance more in my life than I ever have done, which has created a lot more happiness. <laughs> and I must admit, um, I mean, we were like the ice baths, what we went on with the mastermind, that was... Yeah. Very, very scary for me because I was working on that part of me and I know how disciplined I could be. So the thought of not being able to do it was like, oh my God. So that was a bit of a benchmark of where I think I needed to find that discipline back in my life because I'd let it, I'd had to, I had to let it go for a bit to be able to bring it back to then come to this place. And that's what I think is really important for anyone is finding that the balance between discipline and punishment, I'd say. Yeah, punishment on self. But does balance really exist? So it's just something I've been querying a lot of myself. Does balance really exist? Because obviously there's a, this pendulum. Yeah. I yeah. Kind of feel like we kind of balance some plates and we then drop a few to then balance some other plates rather than there being this true balance. I don't know. I just went to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's actually interesting. I guess it's like where the tokens land, isn't it? The to the to look at tokens on a on a on a scale and um we've got to sometimes go that we're always going to be I know you can't see me on the podcast but I'm now kind of like bow balancing my palms upside down it's that push pull isn't it so yeah I agree with, I yeah I understand where you're coming with that but I think it's a sense of I think it's a sense of within self that that balance feels do you know you yeah. know when you feel I guess do you know what a better word would be in flow Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we're always like something is flowing, isn't it? So that would mean that we're not just at that center point, but we're able to then kind of move between um, to flow. Yeah. What feels good for you, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. So that would lead on to then something about identity, because I guess, and something you've probably seen a lot in your work as well is our clients often label themselves something. It's normally, I'm a fixer. I'm a doer. I look after everybody else. Yeah. When people adopt these identities, where does that, where do you think that comes from? Oh, wow. Probably some of it childhood, maybe um, because we often can be um, the fixer, the overachiever, the rebel, the all these archetypes that they come so sometimes it can come from what you're told from your guardians and the people that you and your parents and the people that you're around um and then maybe you then adopt that and it becomes like a maybe like an attachment like because if I'm mm. something and I'm then yeah. then I'm, I mean something don't I but when we will yeah I guess that's where my soul work comes in when we drop all that who are we as a soul like when we take the masks off who are we as as um as a soul what lights us up from that rather than what we've been told or what we believe and and what becomes um yeah that identity that can be quite can be quite can be quite is that a word imprisoning and um, that's I'm yeah. sure people I mean by that yeah like it can because then we we can block ourselves or we can we can be capable of many other things than what that 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 mask or that that identity um traps us in it's like breaking that down is oh that's that's exciting isn't it like what could we be if we weren't that identity or weren't that that or or, or it could be part of us it's like I, I explained to my clients we have so many parts of us and when we can start to understand that that maybe one part of us is the fixer or the whatever it may be and that that may serve us in some way but like what about all these other fascinating parts that we've not yet explored or um or able to become friends with well it's almost I, I had a picture on my mind as you were saying that of someone stuck at the sea holding onto a bit of wood the, the ship's sunk and they hold on to this bit of wood but if they let go of that bit of wood the island's right there yeah Mm, yeah I love that yeah and what's on the island we don't know until we get in the flow flow with the flow with the sea <laughs> I guess people have fears right they have fears that there's sharks in the water if we're going to carry on using that analogy yeah the sharks aren't really there right yeah sometimes it's the the power of the mind isn't it the the power of what we call the ego is in the the monkey brain that tells us all these scary things and and it's how we we bring that on board with us isn't it bring it on board with us to to enable not to be yeah scared off by our own thoughts I mean sometimes we're more scared by our own selves than we are from anything on the outside um, and when we start to that's what I always say is your internal home is the best place to 
to have a nice and what I say family at the dinner table talking to each other which is our thoughts and our and how we speak to each other and those parts yeah that's when um life gets a little less scary you can have a bit more fun (laughs) and relax and not have to play up to these big archetypes that we've all these masters you said that we've created we've just created them haven't we yeah it's like a little it's like is often what we don't realize we're doing is we're creating a whole pantomime and um and we can just relax a little bit more and realize that the ending the the it's not about any of the ending it's the journey isn't it but if we've got these voices and these these scaring ourselves then we're often blocking ourselves before we've even allowed the visualization to finish of what we could be capable of mm. so i'm gonna just I, I i'm a bit random as you know oh so, my this should be fun <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah we're, we're, i think i reckon we're probably the same or similar personality type i reckon <laughs> so what made you decide to do a bikini competition I've, I've always been fascinated by the body transformation as well as the mind transformation so i'm just curious what made you decide to do it and how hard was it Okay, so first of all, the re- the one of the main reasons is I was craving actually that what I was explaining about with the athletics, like I, like the the aiming for something and and then um like seeing the body as for that was like a project for me. So I was like seeing the body as a project and it changing. Uh, but I, I missed um that competitive part of me. Yeah. Um, and what was great about what I the just to to clarify the bikini competing that I did was um was quite different. It was not just about the um the the body or the aesthetics. We did athletics like um like different basically if you look a little bit like before CrossFit got kind of big, it was like pull-ups, press-ups, skipping, sprints. And so we did that in the morning. So that enabled me to go, that's why I'm doing it, because I like all the athletic side. And because <laughs> like why it like what do you want to do that for and there's part of me that thought what the hell do I want to do this for this is this is crazy but I also walked into an amazing community of women um because it was an amazing um uh, competition and it was all about empowering women so it's like their their motto was a little bit like GI Jane meets Miss World and um, so that really appealed to me so it kind of like for me I Part of me was, you know, when they sometimes say ignorance is bliss, Mm -hmm. like I I just knew that I was like, I want something to, I want a goal and I want, and and also there was was a girl that was actually going, you'd be amazing and you'll love all the girls. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll try this this out because I'd had these thoughts of doing the bikini cut meet. So I walked into a community that was amazing and it gave me a lot of inspiration for where I'm at now. Um, because it was, um, there was loads of like, it was, I ended up taking about 20 ladies through the process myself. Like, and this competition was very inclusive, which is like the things that I've done with Shine Bright Like a Diamond. Cause I think all women come in so many different beautiful forms that for me, that's one thing that I didn't particularly like about the bikini competing is that you have to be this certain this certain way and if not that means well you don't score high and what would the woman would feel she's not good enough and um and the way that um with with the 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 competition that I did there was like bikini competing uh, sorry there was bikini there was diva there was beach model then there was also Monroe which was like so you you Monroe was like kind of like you you're just more shapely girl and and then So every everybody was um in, was was welcome and invited as I feel it should be. So that that it was it was a beautiful place to be, and especially to take women that I coached through it. It was very empowering, um, and that's what gave me a lot of my inspiration for my shine bright like a diamond um, that I did, which was an empowering uh, program for women and walk down a catwalk, your transformation and and what have you. So so was it hard when I was in the thick of it when I was doing some of those things? there were testing times like when it's your birthday and all you can think about is like having a glass of wine um or whatever it's like so yeah it was testing but it was equally like rewarding as well do you know and and I I must admit I probably did it at a point in my life where I was a bit more 
I'd say sensible around kind of like eating behaviors and things like that. I wasn't, I wouldn't say perfect. So I've had my moments of massive imperfectness, disordered eating and what have you. But at that time I did have a bit more of a relaxed approach to an extent. Like I, I wasn't just eating fish and rice cakes, put it that way. I was, I was eating a nice round. Chicken and broccoli every day with that and sweet potato. Is already the, the... I used to do a lot of po- like I, I help ladies with like the posing and stuff like that because I used to dance so I used to love um helping them out with their posing and just basically just being that Sasha first when they walked on the on the stage but some of them used to come and the stuff that they were eating they were just like shadows of themselves like because they were eating in such a strict way and I think for them they were my biggest teachers in some ways because I was like whoa I may, might want to I might want to do well at this game but I don't want to lose my marbles do you know what I mean I've got a lot of women that I'm coaching as well so so I guess I had a bit more of a sensible approach with it so yes it was testing at times but I managed to get my mind on board and be a little bit more sensible okay perfect so you moved on from that and you've obviously done lots of personal training and helping people and how important is the physical to go with the body, with the mindset as well? Because you can't have one without the other, right? Yeah, def- yeah. And this is like that is exactly as I like share it with with um, with with my uh, clients and the ladies that I work with. It's like the body. Um, so we healthy body, healthy mind, healthy mind, healthy body, like it works in connection with each other because we can't expect to feed the body shit, like literally like crap food and expect the mind to be flourishing. And we can't expect the other way. So if we are feeding the mind with shit and crap, um, I'm very real by the way, um, and expect (laughs) the body to be responding in a positive way and the cells of the body to be nourishing. So this comes with a, with um, a two way um, of, of, of looking at things that I'm really, really, really kind of, um, yeah, that I, that I share with my clients. Like it's so important because we, we've got to get that balance between the two and I say balance, but let's say flow, flow between the two. Um, because we, we, the body, is the temple isn't it the body is like what it's the it's the vehicle it's the vehicle that we're here with so we've got to nourish it and and um and look after it in that way as we have the mind because then when they both complement each other that's when we really feel revitalized and feel more at peace and feel 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 better about life and feel happier I guess it's almost like an infinity loop, isn't it? And the, the brain and the body are opposite ends and it's just literally just flowing between each other, right? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So if we don't sleep right, eat right, you know, and you don't, have, like you said, you don't have to be perfect, but yeah. as long as you nourish yourself to the right amount, the brain works better and everything else becomes better. So. Yeah. And I'm just thinking this uh, society as things have been before, it's it's just... And, and and I have hope. I was saying this to you before, like I'm ever the optimist and I'm seeing things changing massively uh, because, like I said, through my own journey of of feeling like, for example, I probably didn't explain when I did the bikini competition, I still didn't feel right. And it was like, right, it's now time to work on the mind. So I've been tackling that since probably like 2014, 15. Um, I just feel that a lot of what we see in society is all body body take this train like this do this then you're going to feel better and then people are getting there and like I've even had it hence the reason why I've gone into mindset the woman's got to the size 10 she's got whatever it may be in bullshit to what they are it's how you feel but like got to that what they wanted and then they're like oh I don't actually feel that much different yeah I can fit in my clothes and I and I feel but I didn't, it's, it's that expectation of it being this certain something. But if we've not worked on the mind and the behaviors and how we feel about ourselves, then then we're just going to remain empty within this body that we actually were so seeking for, which was my experience. You know, like it was like, whoa, that didn't give me what I expected. But I think society and I hope, I hope now, like I'm hearing a lot of coaches, which excites me, um, that people are starting to realize that it is a two-way game. We've got to look at the the mindset as well to be able to to feel whole. I guess one thing that I guess I'm seeing a lot with my clients, and I'm sure you've seen, is that people don't have a dream anymore. Mm. Mm. Like if you think about it, when we were four, the teacher would always say, "Greg, <laughs> what do 
you want to be and you could you could go wild right i wanted to be like the black david attenborough and wow. then, I, then i saw the spiders in the brazilian rainforest and i was like forget that <laughs> david can have it but people don't dream nowadays i mean where do you think that comes from yeah and i guess this goes into a little bit like the the, the soul work that i do as well is like that's like coming back to the the inner child isn't it it's like allowing that inner child to come forth and allow it to dream because I have no idea why like I, I, there's so many factors to why we probably start capping ourselves and not dreaming but for me that's not life like like we, we can do and be and have anything that we want if we get our mind in the right place as well as the vehicle the body that's pushing like we Yeah, so I guess dreaming is about connecting with that little inner child that that has dreams and sometimes doing those things which light you up because that's when that's when you can actually have time and well it's just you're in I mean we keep this must be a profound word that's part of this podcast, but you're in flow then. Um, I think whether anybody's heard of Abraham Hicks and it's all about when you're in the flow doing things you enjoy that's when the magical like um, thing that's when you know what to do next you know so I guess dreaming is for me I don't know why people don't dream anymore maybe people should ask themselves that question but I I I like to dream (laughs) as much as I can (laughs) It's really funny because I've really been working with clients on that. And the first thing, before we start anything nutrition or any of that stuff, I'm like, what's the dream? And people's faces are just like, I thought I was going to get calories and macros. And like, Hell no. Hell no. We want to work on what's going on up there. So, yeah. And is, this some, is that something you work on with your ladies and you've got a diamond program or something like yeah. a program? Is that something you really focus and get them to start thinking about? Yeah, in the diamond method, one of the pinnacle ones is like inner child work. So connecting with the inner child. Yeah, definitely. And um and looking at, at kind of like what what's what lights you up? What lights you up? Because if if you do more of that, life will move in a direction that feels a lot more beautiful. But sometimes it doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be like dreaming doesn't I think sometimes when we say dream it's because it's so profound like oh but what happens if that dream doesn't happen or what happens if what happens if I, I can't have it which then all these scary thoughts mm. we, we talked about earlier come in but what about if it can just be what lights you up mm. like, what, what, what makes you feel like time is no longer like you don't look at the time you don't know what day it is you're just in that moment doing what you're doing mm. and everybody's it's different but we do more of that and life will travel in a direction that that feels feels good I, I feel like we're singing from the same hymn shoot here in that I kind of feel like people are coming definitely from places of pain mm. so this is why people sometimes have these behaviors that bounce back because you kind of you have the pain let's just say I want to lose some belly fat classic example but yeah. that's kind of a place of pain rather than what they actually want to become. So you get away from the pain, you take a painkiller, ibuprofen, get rid of the headache for a while, but actually it could be your eyes and that's the long-term issue. So is that is that something you observe that a lot of people kind of come from this need to get rid of something or to lose something or to... Yeah, yeah, I guess people are... Uh, I mean, it's just sometimes I think, is it is it the way that the human... Um, human mind works is we're, we're wired to direct ourselves away from pain aren't we um however it's like the 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 fun and the the excitement is in what what, what what's it gonna what do you want to feel like what who do you want to be who would you want to be in the process because that's what's going to direct you more towards sometimes where you didn't even realize you were going to be like sometimes we can have a goal and then go actually no, this feels better. Do you know, this feels, this is, this is me. That's where I call one of my programs. This is me. Do you know, like we sometimes can have that curiosity for life rather than, than sometimes. Yeah. So I think um, it's quite a limiting just feeling of trying to get away from the, the pain. What about all the, 
the amazingness that can come when we allow ourselves to 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 dream and and move towards that yeah but i don't deserve it katie i don't deserve to be happy why should i be happy then i would go to for me i mean this is where i i i get curious like a little inspector morse of where these beliefs come from so for me you've got to know why they feel they don't deserve it and some of this stuff normal well 95 percent of the time it comes from childhood and it comes from sometimes a voice that's not yours mm-hmm. um whether it be through not always parenting but other kind of relationships we've had in this past sometimes a lot of them voices aren't our own we believe that they are so not deserving it's like let's get really curious about where that comes from it's just telling someone that they deserve it is just like that is not gonna that's not gonna wash it's like right let's go down let's let's have a look a bit deeper but that's why I love doing um the subconscious work that I do which actually is a lot it's it's a lot more pain free in the sense of that like so I, I take people into to hypnosis and we get to the subconscious part of the brain to see where the root cause of why someone feels they aren't good enough why someone feels that they don't deserve something because there will always be something that will profound that may have happened in your life but it probably not be as scary as you actually think like some of these things happen at the really young ages that we've then adopted and then something can trigger us in our adult life and then we go back to that story and that we don't deserve or we don't. So it's like, for me, I'm just like, yeah, give yourself the opportunity to, to get curious over that first um, and know that it's not all of you, it's only part of you. And sometimes the stories become habits almost. It's almost like we've forgotten what the emotional issue was in the first place. That yeah. That. And it's just become so habitual now. And when you ask someone, you're like, why do you do that? Now? I don't even know anymore. But yeah. That's, that's where you have to dig, as you said, into the subconscious story about what it means and mm. what makes you do it, right? Yeah. And we've all been there. And you know what? Even as us as um, fallible human beings, even as coaches, like we all have our little points where we have to question our limiting beliefs and question these stories that come into our head. It's just that I think you just get better at questioning and better at getting curious and saying, nada, I'm not letting that part come in. You're like, I've seen you, I've heard you, you've been there and you've stopped me doing X, Y, Z. You ain't stopping me moving there. It's like, it's always a game. It's always a, I say life's a game. It's like, we're like little sonic hedgehogs reaching that next level. And even when you get to the next level, it's like, oh shit, all these things, these new bloody monsters are coming at me now. It's like every level has a new devil. It's like, we're, we're always progressing. Like we're always working on it no matter. Like I know I am, I am purely human and purely imperfect. <laughs> because we are infallible well we are fallible we we infallible i wish um (laughs) but this is why we have coaches right yeah yeah and if so if we didn't have a yeah so did you say that's why we have a conscience a a coach a coach oh a coach yeah yeah me i've got a right team anyone thought it was usain bolt (laughs) you can be usain bolt if you want to be so I always share that. I mean, I, I did a post a bit ago about like I looked and f- for me, it's been the best investments I've ever made because like I said, my home, like I could have actually probably bought another home with the amount I've invested, but that's my choice. And that's and that's worked out well for me in the sense that my internal has got nothing but more peaceful and, and I've had nothing but like more like success not always definitely like success comes in all different ways like for me success is being more peaceful and and what I say for me a coach yeah and they're able to you and not that you always want it but they they show you your shit as well because we all need to we all need to see that and sometimes then it we we move past it because if not we just stay in it and no one likes to trample around in their own shizzle <laughs> but then you have that because we, we both our coaches probably both made us cry many a time yeah yeah but then you get that tired bit after it and then after yeah like, yes this feels yeah cool. you're broke. yeah because that's what i say like we're, we're a layer of an onion unless someone helps us to move past that kind of like layer like that layer is that but that there's that that freedom and that peace that comes over the other side of going oh, 
okay it's like it's like sometimes when it gets what I try and explain to my clients sometimes is like sometimes when it gets the most sticky and it gets the most like just damn right sometimes really bloody challenging I'll be like this is good like this means you're breaking you're moving through it doesn't feel like it now the head wants to tell you that it's like you've gone backwards and you've but I was like no 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 trust this is where the shift happens this is where where you move into a new like you said the version of you and and like we said you drop in the old identity to move into a whole new place that what could that what could you do without that baggage anymore and now that is like that's exciting, isn't it? It's like, yeah. It's, it's like, um, you know, do we know that I, I didn't know this until the other day that spiders actually shed their exoskeleton. Oh, really? Yeah. So, like, you know, snakes shed their skin. Spiders, or the big types, and the tarantulas, they actually shed yeah. another, another, a whole new spider comes out. Um, yeah. That's what we're doing with that stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. And the version just gets less scary because maybe it gets a little less <laughs> smaller. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it, that spider looked very big to me. I, I, <laughs> this is why I up as David Attenborough. So <laughs> what would be the, the kind of, if, if someone was listening to you now and said, I like this lady, I want to hear what her kind of top tips are for navigating life. What would they be? What would you leave someone from this podcast and say, right, if you tried this today, it would move you forward in your life. Um, a good tip would be ask yourself better questions. So like sometimes, so if we're looking at this in terms of more um, mindset and then moving on to kind of like transforming, I'd say like really just get better at and all. And I guess that leads me on to saying like that sometimes that little inner voice that you, that you hear there, like allow it to be a part of you like outside of self not you do you know so you can I mean I have a good laugh with some of my clients and say what should we call it and we've had everything from Deirdre to bloody I mean some of them have swore and used whatever but then you can actually be aware of the fact that it's not you that's not you that's saying there so a tip would be detach yourself from that voice maybe have a laugh and call it a name and then you can see where it's propping up in your life um and also as well it's just like I mean, let's let me go with some of the stuff that I've shared today is connect with your inner child. Like life is about living and having fun. Like, so how can you connect with that little inner part of you? Um, Cause like that is what lights you up. Like what often you enjoy doing as a kid, because the more that you do that, the more that you will move into life and, and life will start to show you the, the way to go when you are in that place of what we call like flow and 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 excitement because we can get really serious as adults and who says that we have to become serious because we don't we really we really don't and then and then I guess this is a little bit more cliche but but like just spending more time like um in the moment in nature and and doing things which because a lot of what I work on with women and this is a big one that I'm sharing at the minute and I'm kind of getting loads of like downloads about it is, is looking at our feminine masculine energy and like the collective, as a collective, we are so in the masculine energy. I mean, this is like a, a podcast for another time, but like, okay. how can you, yeah, how can you like, for example, how can you step more into like not the doing, like we're, we're always think we're succeeding if we're doing and we're action and everything's got to be like in that, like more masculine energy. It's like, but like, how do we move more into nature, flow more, um, connect more with that, like intuition? Because if we get the, the, the voice out of his head, that's, that's been the little bugger, you know, like chatting away and actually listen to the soul, the, the inner being, the inner voice, um, like the inner the, the, that's guiding us that's more when we're in this feminine energy that that's powerful but even if you just google how do I get into my feminine energy trust me life will get will get better this is not to do with male and female by the way we all have feminine and masculine energy within self but but yeah that's some stuff that I share because it it creates it creates wholeness um within self um so I hope those tips help they were quite quite big ones but no no this are the good ones I think there is I like this... to leave people thinking. I like to, like, sometimes I think that's the joy of life, isn't it? Like, sometimes I may have said something, you think, what the hell's shun about? Like, go and explore it. Go and explore it. Because that's what another tip I'd say is, never stop learning. Never stop being curious. 
because that is as a child that's what we did that's what that's where we keep progressing and moving forward when we're stagnant that's when it gets all a bit sticky and smelly and crap <laughs> I call that East Enders living yeah like yeah if, if anyone watches East Enders who watches is listening to this or is watching this on the on YouTube um that's you know that that place is never happy yeah but they continue to live there mm. like, yeah that can't be fun and people watch yeah. it and take it in and I know we need to have our own little relaxation but yeah, yeah. that's you, know, you say if you don't come out of that little bubble that you're in all the time yeah and it's understanding that it's scary sometimes because that's that's sometimes like where people find comfort in disassociating but there's that little voice inside them that says there's got to be more and mm -hmm. if you listen to that voice, there's got to be more than even if it's just, do you know what? I'm not going to watch you stand us today. I'm going to go for a walk. That is one step moving forward in a different direction. So it doesn't have to be big, massive moves. It can be one little bit at a time that just just takes you into a into a new a new place. And then you you just never know, never know where where it can take you. That's the exciting bit. That's dreaming. <laughs> do you know, I feel like this podcast, if, if we let it, it could go on forever. So I'm going to part. Yeah. You know, I would love to have you back for a part two. We can talk about yeah, that and stuff. That's that. awesome. For the ladies who want to get to know you more, just tell us mm -hmm. where they can find you and I'll include that in the show notes. Where can they, where can they listen to you and understand more about you? Yeah. The main place is on my uh, Facebook page. So um, Katie Ford. Mm -hmm. um, so you can add me on there. I've also got my website. It's, um, Katie, so letter K T four D. Okay. Um at um sorry, www.kt4d.co.uk. So like the this the little um initials. Uh but mainly my place that you will discover and 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 learn more and and kind of like uh, connect with me is on my my Facebook and Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is coaching with Katie Ford, but my Facebook is just Katie Ford, plain and simple. We see all the diamonds <laughs> and the diamond method and all that. We will see, yeah, diamonds and this is and all that shizzle. Like, love a, love a bit. We've all got a diamond waiting to shine inside all of us. Hell just allow it to be polished. <laughs> I'm looking forward to catching up with you um, at the beginning of the week, at the end of this week. Yeah. yeah, Sunday. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. Can't say I'm excited about the ice baths, but we've got to do the shizzle to... <laughs> <laughs> Those who are listening, we're, we're going to be doing ice baths um, every day. Like, Challenge ourselves. We have no idea what's going to be coming. Like that's like how a lot of us clients feel. So trust me. So it's about putting yourself on the other end of that, um, the other the side of the spectrum. <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. We got this. <laughs> yes. you, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and your energy. And I'm looking forward to a part two. And yeah, for those of you who are listening, share this with your friends and family. I think you'll get some awesome value and go follow Katie. Talk soon in the next episode. Bye. <laughs>